Welcome again to another segment of Discover Bible Prophecy. We'd like to invite you to visit our website, www.bibleprophecyhelp.com, or send us an email to comments at thecomingcrisis.org. If, after viewing this, please click on the buttons below to subscribe or to like. Thank you. Now, this study may be new to some of you. Please consider this material carefully and prayerfully. My opening statement is, The devil is a liar and the father of lies. Do you believe this? Way back in the Garden of Eden, the devil's first encounter with human beings was a lie. You remember this story as it's recorded in Genesis 3, verses 1 to 5. Now the serpent, that is, the devil, said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any of the trees in the garden? And the woman said, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. Then the serpent sneeringly said to the woman, You will not certainly die. The devil claimed, You will not certainly die. And that was the first lie. Jesus, in John 8, said, You come from your father, the devil, and you desire to do what your father wants you to do. The devil was a murderer from the beginning. He has never been truthful. He doesn't know what the truth is, and whenever he tells a lie, he's doing what comes naturally to him. He is a liar and the father of lies. Now that was Jesus speaking. So the devil says, You will not certainly die. And many Christians today are unknowingly believing this lie of the devil. In the most beloved verse in the Bible, John 3.16, says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So it would look something like this if you were writing it in a formula. Believe in Jesus, have eternal life. Believe not in Jesus, no eternal life, and you will perish. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary for the word perish says it means to die or be killed, to disappear or to be destroyed, to cease to exist, to slowly break apart by a natural process. Most Christian people today believed that the lost will burn in hell forever and ever and ever. They believe that the lost will never die but suffer for eternity. How long does hell burn? Doesn't everlasting fire mean that hell will be burning ceaselessly and eternally? Here are some Bible verses that may appear to say that. 
in Matthew 25, verse 46, Jesus said, These shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And Mark 9, verse 43, again Jesus speaking, And if your hand makes you sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than having two hands go to hell and into the fire that shall never be quenched. And Revelation 14, verse 11 says, And the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever. With a cursory glance at these three texts, it almost sounds like hell will burn forever. The verses seem to say that sinners will never die but live forever in eternal punishment in hell. Help! We need to understand this better. Jesus said the sinner will perish. That is, they will cease to exist. But these Bible texts seem to say something different. In Malachi, chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, Malachi prophesies that the day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. And the day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. Then you will trample on the wicked. They will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord God Almighty. These verses tell us that the wicked will be totally burned up be ashes under the soles of your feet. Now consider this Bible text in Jude. You know Jude is just a little book, one chapter, and he he makes this subject very plain. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in similar manner, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Just reading that, you would think that Sodom and Gomorrah are still burning today, but they are not burning today, and yet the Bible says they suffered the vengeance of eternal fire. How can this be explained? Obviously, these cities are gone today. They were completely burned up until there is nothing left of them. So these are my conclusions. The Bible says God is love. You know, he even loves his enemies. As the soldiers were nailing Jesus to the cross, he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And in Ezekiel, God says, As I live, says the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? Here God is pleading with us to turn away from our wicked ways so that we can live because he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. God cannot allow sin, crime, and violence to continue to cause suffering and death in this world. But he isn't one to torture his children. So he does the most loving thing he can. He destroys them eternally. The Bible says, He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. Nahum 1.9 Unfortunately, there are people who believe what the devil says, that the wicked won't surely die, and that they will be tormented forever. And they think, if that's so, I don't believe that God is love. 
because if God was love, he wouldn't allow them to suffer. But God cannot allow sin. He, in his justice and mercy, will punish the wicked, then completely burn up. They will eternally cease to exist. The devil claimed, you will not certainly die. And Jesus said, if you believe in me, you will have eternal life. But if you don't believe in me, there is no eternal life, and you will perish. So who do you believe? Do you believe the devil? Or do you believe in Jesus' words? I pray that you have received a blessing from today's study. Again, if you like this, please click using the buttons below to subscribe or to vote like. Remember Jesus' words in Revelation 22, verse 7, Look, I am coming soon. Have faith in God, in the God that planned for our eternal life, the God which cannot lie when he promised us a way to have eternal life even before the world began. Have faith, dear friend, that Jesus is coming soon and prepare to meet thy God.